All right, guys, how's it going? It's safe to say that it's long past time that Intel were back in competitive form, especially in the data center and the desktop. The data center situation is grim and will likely remain so for the next three years at least. On the desktop, they've struggled to contend with AMD's higher core count, but worse came with Zen 3's arrival when they basically lost it everywhere. Or maybe at best, just about tied in gaming while getting thrashed on productivity and on power draw. And then they released Rocket Lake, which was not a great flagship CPU. More of a damp squib than a rocket, if you ask me with its paltry 8 cores serving up a reduction in multi-threaded performance versus their own previous generation, but at least it had a decent increase in single-threaded performance. But they clearly needed something new, something dramatically different in fact. And that's what's coming next with Alder Lake. We first caught wind of Intel's Big Little CPU back in March 2020, and that was via this Chinese leaker forum. The initial reception was a mix of hilarity and head-scratching, as the tech community assumed that this was Intel officially quitting the high-end battle. AMD were already on 16 cores and 32 threads with Zen 2, and yet here we had Intel planning to attack that with its 8 real hyper-threaded cores and 8 Atom cores for a total of 24 threads. 18 months later? We know from experience that new architectures generally take four or five years to come to fruition. So this was clearly Intel's response to Zen 1, which launched in early 2017. They've had a look at what they were up against with Zen, and what that they could realistically do to get back into competition four or five years later. Alder Lake was it. And as it nears release, there's been a few benchmarks leaked these past few months. And the last one from late July showed some very surprising, to me at least, performance. Over at Twitter, the leaker Raichu, who has been accurate in the past, posted Cinebench R20 results of what was claimed to be flagship 12900K, it's not the KS, that was a mistake, 12900K is a qualification sample which is pretty much final silicon. And while it wasn't overclocked, it was water cooled, <laughs> which could be a bit of a red flag there. But this single threaded Cinebench R20 score of 810 is around 25-30% to 30 faster than the 5950X. This is an enormous lead, the likes of which we haven't seen in almost a decade for Intel. The multi-threaded score of 11,600, that's around about 10-13% to 13 faster than the 5950X. And while that's not quite as impressive as a single threaded result, this doesn't really make a huge amount of sense to me given Intel's thread deficit. Previous leaks of Alder Lake, though, showed performance which appeared to be around par, core for core, with Ryzen 5000. However, those were in laptops, which, as we know, do have power limits. So perhaps unsurprisingly, Raichu later said that people shouldn't get too excited too early here because the power consumption might be over 200 watts in full turbo frequency, which would be about 5.3 gigahertz single thread and could easily be four point something high, multi-thread. Now, I'm not actually going to get into Alder Lake too much. However, it's just possible and perhaps probable that Intel's little cores are pretty good in Cinebench R20. Maybe not quite so good in other workloads though. And regardless of the final accuracy of this leak, I think it's clear that Intel are closer in performance with Zen 3, but it's going to come at what is likely going to be hard to swallow <laughs> power draw. But now let's move on to Raptor Lake. Some of this information is already known, but I've got some new stuff to add as well. The good news is, much of the Raptor Lake system on chip taped in in June. And taping in basically means that the design phase is close to being finished and ready for tape out. If you remember what I said last video though, the different parts of Raptor Lake are being taped in at different departments within Intel. Different countries in fact. And all of those parts need to come together before the Raptor Lake sock can be taped out. But that's been done now and it will now go through a bunch of silicon revisions before the final processor is ready for qualification and production. And I actually had a roadmap from late last year. Another one. And this one suggested, left side is tape in here that they would tape in maybe around about, yeah, that should be before the end of March. 
However, they've actually taped in in June, so they have missed their target by maybe a quarter. But honestly, that's nothing too dramatic given, you know, the COVID situation that we're in. Now, regarding the CPU, it's still these same Gracemont Atom cores, the same ones that we're about to see with Alder Lake. However, the core count has doubled from 8 in Alder to 16 in Raptor, but we've known about that for some time. The Raptor Cove core is an update on Golden Cove, and I was told that the power and performance has improved due to a mix of IPC gains, clock speed gains, and a larger L2 cache. There was no info on the level of IPC gain. Honestly, I don't think it's going to be dramatic, maybe 5%, but that's just a guess. But Intel expects around 200 megahertz extra on the core turbo, which will give them, and this is their claim, a world record turbo frequency of 5.5 gigahertz, along with which comes the undisputed single threaded performance leadership, and also a chance at the gaming crown. Now this is all coming from Intel, and we're a year plus out. So don't quote me on that 5.5 gigahertz for Christ's sake. But given what we've just seen with the older late leak, all of this seems perfectly reasonable to me. Memory support will be up to 5.6 gigahertz DDR5. That's for the desktop, with the laptop bars going up to 6.4 gigahertz low power DDR5. And they've also got some new power delivery thing called DLVR, but I think that was leaked a few months ago. Regarding release, the desktop products are aiming for end of 2022. So basically one year after Alder Lake. And if they can actually hit that target, well, it would be almost miraculous given their recent performance. Now, I also have an early list of SKUs, which I'll give a quick rundown of and what it all means. Note that I said early, these can easily be changed before the release, which as I just said is over a year out. There are three different Raptor Lake S dies. The largest is 8 big and 16 little cores. There's also a middle die, the maximum configuration of which is 8 large and 8 small dies. And finally, we've got this uh, small 6 plus 0 die. That's just a noise of hell out of me. Like they couldn't just have made it a 6 plus 2 or something. But getting to the likely products. First, obviously, is the i9. Which, unless Intel decide they don't like the 13 number, the flagship should be called the 13900K. As we said, it's got 24 cores, 8 plus 16, for a total of 32 threads, 36 mega cache, and 32 EUs. So the increase here over Alder Lake is 8 cores and 6 megabyte of cache. As we can see, there's also the 65 watt mainstream option, and the 35 watt low power T option, with the exact same configuration, but obviously going to have a lot lower clock speeds. Moving on to the i7. That is an 8 plus 8 core configuration for 24 threads total and 30 megabyte of cache, still with the same 32 EUs. That's an increase over Alder Lake of 2 cores and 4 threads, and again another 6 megabyte of cache. Once again, there are 65 watt and 35 watt options, and once again, they will clearly have lower clock speeds. Now, the i5, like I said, this is actually an 8 plus 8 die. However, the i5 will only have 6 large cores and 8 smaller atom cores for a total of 20 threads. That's 24 mega cache and again, 32 EUs. And this is an increase of 4 cores and 3 megabyte of cache over Alder Lake i5. Once again, there's a mainstream and low power 65 and 35 watt options with the identical configurations. What's different this time with the i5s though? There's also going to be a 10 core version, and that's got the same 6 large cores, but now only 4 of the smaller cores. So obviously that's less threads, 3 megabyte less cache, and smaller graphics portion as well. What's interesting about this mainstream one is, Intel will be salvaging both the larger die, the 24 core one, and the medium one, the 16 core die. That's obviously what the orange and green boxes mean. So there's going to be i5s made out of two different dies with Raptor Lake. And honestly, all of this seems pretty decent. And then we get to the i3, which looks pathetic at only four large cores and no atom cores. Has a total of eight threads with 12 megabyte of cache and still 32 EUs. The Pentium is an abysmal two cores, which are at least hyper threaded, with six megabyte of cache and 16 EUs. And I don't have the Celeron on this slide. However, it doesn't even have hyper threaded cores. It's simply a two large core chip without hyper threading. But somewhat laughably, Intel believe that uh, DDR5 compatibility is a benefit over Alder Lake. And that is basically it. Right now, at least, everything that I have on Intel's next generation Raptor Lake. And honestly, I think Intel could be back with this. 
Now, I'm not saying that they've got enough to win. And to be honest, there's a feeling that AMD are probably holding something in reserve. I certainly get that feeling. But for someone who panned Intel for this whole big little move, which I did, may just actually work for them. I mean, do we really need more than eight strong hyper-threaded cores on the desktop? I mean, for gaming at least. If those cores are as strong as Intel believes they could be, and then they strap on 16 of these little tiny Atom cores to help with productivity, to me, that could be a winning product. And so Alder Lake looks like it might be a contender. And Intel, believe me about this, they are extremely excited about Raptor Lake, I can assure you. So are we finally getting to the end of Intel's purgatory? If you think so after watching this, then I've got even more better news for you. Now the news I have here is very scant because this is two years out plus. However, I can confirm that not only did Intel tape in Raptor Lake last June, they also taped in Meteor Lake and that was on 4 nanometer, which of course is actually their old 7 nanometers. Now this is a tape in, it's not a tape out, yeah? So we're not talking anywhere near production silicon yet. And there's a possibility that Intel 7 is a cluster, or sorry, the 4 anyway. But Meteor Lake is still scheduled for 2023. But the good news is the design is clearly coming along very nicely. And there was a hint to performance. And perhaps an issue that we've seen with Intel historically as they switch nodes. But I'm not going to get into that in this video. I'll talk a little bit more about that on Patreon at the end of the month, as it's more along the speculation line, which I'm trying to avoid as much as possible on YouTube these days. But right, I'm done, and I'm kind of running out of leaks, so hopefully something's going to turn up in my inbox soon. In the meantime, I'm going to work on that Freethinker series I talked about last video, and I'm also planning a return to some gaming. A specific game, to be clear, one that I played a long time ago, however, and I've been getting back into it again. But that is one for the far future, I think. In the meantime, I'll catch you later, guys.